Hello, welcome to the World Healing Tour podcast, where our mission is to help you heal yourself so you can heal the world. Hi, my name is Noah Crane. Each week, we will bring you tips and tools and inspire you to live your most empowered and joyful life. I'm also the founder of the 3G Effect Mindset, a daily practice to keep you heart-centered in everything you do by staying in a positive mindset and a positive attitude and practicing three important elements. Element number one, every day, remember to have a grateful heart and connect to your gratitude. When you're connected to your gratitude, you're connected to positive feelings and positive emotions and therefore drawing more positive people, things and experiences into your life. Element number two, Remember every day to ground in love and compassion. When I say ground, I mean to grow unshakable roots, strong roots, to believe in yourself, to know that you're worthy of all the abundance this world has to off offer. When you find love and compassion for yourself, you're in a place where you're able to remove the judgments of yourself, learn to love yourself, forgive yourself, accept yourself fully just the way you are. When you're able to do that for yourself, find love and compassion for yourself, you can therefore love, find love and compassion for others, right? And it's a beautiful energy that we put out into the world that we get to receive back into our lives. So ground in love and compassion. And element number three, every day know that you are not alone on this journey. This is a guided journey and you are guided by God. God, universe, higher power, source, whatever you want to call it. I call it God. I say God is inside you because God created you. God is beside you. And God is all around you. Open your heart and soul to God. Have faith and trust in yourself and faith and trust in your journey. We do that by learning to be a really good listener, learning to turn off the noise of others, and the noise of the outside world. So we can hear the messages. God will send you messages and messengers just for you to help guide you on this journey. My whole life has changed by being able to practice the 3G effect. I've been able to find my soulmate. I've been able to write my book and get into the world and share myself, be able to be fully self-expressed. And we should all be able to do that, right? So, so when we keep working on ourselves, we keep believing in your, ourselves, that's how it will work. You will keep being the person you're meant to be. Now, the World Healing Tour, Heal Yourself, Heal the World, that's what it's all about. When we heal ourselves, we can help others heal. And that's why I bring incredible people each week to pour into you and into your life because we all need each other. Nobody can do this journey successfully on their own. I'm sure you would agree with that. So my guest today, Chris, Chris Tarmel, helps authors monetize their work and to get their message out in the world. He does that through his program called the Author Launchpad, Launch into the World. He has been coaching people for over three decades. Welcome, Chris, to the World Healing Tour podcast. Noah, how exciting. Thank you so much. And what an outstanding way that you open up your show, that you opened up this World Healing Tour conversation. Um, I know I had the opportunity to hear you before describe the 3G effect and to hear it again one more time just really uh, creates a space, right? Creates the container for what our conversation gets to speak into. And I really thank you for allowing me to be a guest and to contribute to your audience today. Oh, wow, Chris, I'm so excited to hear. And, you know, it was such a pleasure to meet you in person here in Boca Raton. And you bring so much positive energy when people are around you. You just bring that really loving energy and you want to make a difference with people. You want to help people. And I'm sure that's why you do what you do with helping the authors launch into the world. Why are you so passionate about making a difference for others? I love it. Great question. Um, in my book, and we'll talk about my book in a moment, I'll, I'll show it. One of the chapters that 
I talk about is nature. It's the argument of what has us be who we are. And a lot of times the psychologist, the biologist, I'm an evolutionary biologist by academic practice. That's what I studied was evolutionary biology, animal behavior, human performance. And all the books say it's nature or nurture. And inside of those two domains, we're left that it's either going to be what our genes tell us or nurture what our environment shaped us to do. Shout out to B.F. Skinner. The third part that I have come to learn that I believe is what has been missing and what people, when we talk about purpose or start with why the Simon Sinek or uh, understanding what our calling is, is assignment. As a hospice volunteer, I sat with many individuals as they approach the veil to cross back to whatever we came from. Now, an evolutionary biologist doesn't normally say, where do we go back to? The appropriate thing for an evolutionary biologist to say is, you know, we were buried and that's the end of the show. All of our neurobiochemical firings, the electrochemical impulses end at the time when oxygen stops to reach the cells. But when I start to when I started to dive into why do I do what I do? Why am I lit up by others having podium moments in their lives? Why does it matter to me that I could trace back to when I was 10 years old, uh, a young boy, my dad teaching the judo class in Downey, California, where I started learning competitive judo. And the first time I'm ever asked to coach somebody, it's a little blind boy who comes to the class and my dad and my senior instructor, the sensei, say, Chris, it is your job to teach him how to be a first-degree white belt. And I was like, what are you talking about? This little boy's blind. They said, yeah, figure it out. And when I, not only for myself, but for my clients, when I look for the clues, the evidence that this has been the calling, this has been your assignment in life, to uncover, to unfold, to discover, and then to bring it together so you could deliver your work out to the world. Noah, there is nothing more fulfilling than to have people stand on whatever the podium is in their life. Whatever is gonna help them show up and shine their light so they could be a light that causes others to shine their lights out in the world, for me is living my life work. It is living my highest purpose. So that is what calls me in. How I do it is through a program called the Author Launchpad. So it really is about how do I get to have people shine their gifts, their talents, their light in the world using all of the skill sets that my life has equipped me with. I, I, lo I love that. That's amazing. And, you know, the assignment that you said, um, why is it that, do you think each one of us has an assignment that comes into this world? And why is it so important for people not to hold back their gifts? Because if you have an assignment, if you came here with an assignment and you don't fully play out, you know, what have you seen people feel like at the end of their life when they haven't fully played out their assignment? Wow. All right. So you, you gave me a couple of questions there. Mm -hmm. um, all right. So I'm going to answer with one of my favorite sections here from the Gita, the Bhagavad Gita, one of my most influential books to me. And there's a section here and I've got it marked and I apologize for not having it. Okay, you just asked me why assignment matters. Mm -hmm. The Gita is written years before the Jewish carpenter ever shows up on the scene. This is one of the Gilded Ages, the Golden Age of India, India, Sanskrit, um, knowledge and enlightenment. And there's a section here, and if you haven't read the Gita, it is between Arjuna talking to Krishna, and Krishna is now saying, hey, this is what I want everyone to know. This is the enlightened journey. Here's the opportunity to transcend the body and to get who you could be in the world. And he says this. This is um, on page 78, better it's chapter Three, Krishna says to Arjuna, it is better to strive in one's own dharma than to succeed in the dharma of another. 
One more time for audience listening. It is better to strive in one's own dharma than to succeed in the dharma of another. That's powerful. I, it's powerful. And I truly believe all the great avatars, you, you mentioned God, and we could play with that too. Uh, but all the great avatars, as we look through all the holy works around the world in some way, shape, or form, they have invited us, almost admonished us to say, you got to do you. That is the opportunity of this lifetime. That is the journey that you are here to do. And in doing so, you are going to cause something out in the world that will have others be set free to do what they are meant to do in their lives. You know, one of the, as I read it there in the Gita, one of the ways that I hear it through the Jewish carpenter is when his disciples are asking him, Master, Master, I think it's in Matthew or Luke, Master, Master, how do we get to heaven? Tell us what do we got to do? Where do we got to go? And he pretty much says, No, 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 no. Lo, heaven is inside you, it is amongst you. Stop looking at all these other external places and go here, go inside. That's where you're going to find it. So all the great avatars have been pointing us back to something that we learned in our cosmic energetic origin that then planted us into this body vehicle that we get to play out, act out, own, and then deliver who we are as we're supposed to be in this lifetime out to the world. Yeah, that, that is really important. And um, so, but how about people, a lot of people like they'll do their thing, right? But they're not really cheering for others. How important is it to do your thing, but still be such a cheerleader for other people doing their part in the world? Because I just believe it's easy to just think, well, this is just about my journey and about me. And I don't yeah. care about anybody else. I want people to follow me, but I'm not going to follow anybody else. So you've seen that, right? The more selfish approach that people take. Yeah. Um, it's a big answer because part of that answer requires me looking at examples in the world where inhumanity has occurred. And in those moments of inhumanity, we ask ourselves, how is that part of shining our light? How is that way of being part of the journey that we're supposed to be on that sets others free? I don't have the answer for it. You know, I, I think uh, I'll take the worst possible and we're going to the deep end right away here, but that's okay. You know, the man of the century by Time Magazine, you know, People Magazine has, who's the sexiest man alive for 2023, 2024? And Patrick Dempsey keeps winning because all you women think he's the big hunky man out there right now. It used to be George Clooney. But Time said the man of the century that had the greatest impact on who we are as a human, as a human civilization was Adolf Hitler. No one would say I don't think anybody in their right mind would say who, who follows the laws of do no harm, leave good, speak good, and be good to others would have elected him to be somebody who made a difference, a positive difference. Mm -hmm. But he made a difference. There is no doubt about that. The opportunity comes is what are we to do in the face of what some would assign as evil or as a way of being? What are others to do to offset the hurt, the hate, the injury that was caused by that? It becomes our opportunity to say, who am I? Who do I declare myself to be? And what am I here to do to do my part to fill back into the container of love, cosmic love that offsets that? I think that's the opportunity that we each as individuals get to have. And so when people show up and they're living within the ego, the domain of the ego, and the ego has been just defined, and I, and I really push back when people say, 
oh, it's evil, it's the devil, it's this. We assign names like that because we are afraid to take ownership for that reptile animal within us that in a moment's notice can become vicious, can become inhumane, can become automatic. And we're just acting out of anger, out of vengeance. And we see it. We're, we're seeing it now in parts of our world. We're seeing it in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. And so when that shows up in the world, I don't know how to answer it. But how I resolve it for myself is then I need to go and continue to do more of the good work that I've been assigned to do to counteract and or be greater than the hurt, the injustice, the unfair work that is being put into the world by others. That's yeah. how I think we could be called to answer that question the way you asked. Yes, and um, you know we went deep into that into that other dark side. And um, what I what I do think is that you know so many people are followers, right? They're not they're following other people rather than you know leaning into who they are and sharing their purpose in the world. Because sometimes it's easier for people to just the noise of the outside world will take them away into something negative or into something they really shouldn't follow. And that's why it's so important to go within yourself, to get to know yourself, to be able yeah. to follow a, a path that you stay true to. Because at the end of the day, we're here to leave a legacy of love and leave this world better than we found it. We don't want to, there's, pl like you said, there's plenty of darkness in the world and we definitely don't want to bring more of that into the world and especially not when it comes to sharing our message and leaving this world better than we found it. I think that that is what every author wants to do or most authors want to do, yeah. that, um, especially self-help books and things like that, is they want to make this world better than they found it. And, um, you know, and that, that's definitely the, I think, the focus of most people, would you say, that write their books and want to get their message out in the world? Absolutely. It is people wanting to make a difference in the world. Um, that's why people put it out in the world. And, and the war, you know, we can't change some of the words that were used before we were given those words. I think that's one of the things that people unconsciously fall into. I don't like the word self-help. Um, I think the pitfall is to believe that these books mean we need help because when the ego hears help, it immediately says, I don't need any help. I'm okay. Mm -hmm. I'm fine. I don't need any help. But there's no one that is born with all of the right tools, all of the right practices, all of the right choices all of the experiences that lead us to live higher purpose, connected purpose, loving purpose. So those books really should have been made first and called Better Living, Books for Better Living. We all want that. But the moment someone said, oh, smoking their cigarettes in the high office, just uh, let's call them self-help. People could go help themselves. And it was stamped as that. And we've been swimming in this water ever since that we create self-help books. No, authors are committed to leaving books that make a difference. These are books about better living, books about making a difference, books about living your most fulfilled life. And whether it's going to be leadership, personal, professional, spiritual, all those books come together cumulatively to help people live fulfilling better lives. Yeah, I love that. And can you tell me about your book, Chris? I, I didn't really know much about your book. Yeah, absolutely. Well, um, thank you very much for asking. It's right here. It is called Living Your Life's Work um, from Discovery to Declaration and Delivery. And so, uh, you know, I get shy and I just got shy right now. This is an important part that we're going to talk about. I didn't read the entire cover to you right now. I'm going to read it again. I want to do that again because we all get shy about skin in the game, about what is ours. If it's someone else's, we'll do it all day long. But the moment it comes about us, there's a level of leveling up that each one of us needs to be able to practice and to do. And 
I just in that moment, the way you asked me right now, no, I got a little shine. I didn't read it all. So it is called living your life's work from discovery to delivery, unleashing your full potential and leaving your mark in the world by Chris Trammell. So why living your life's work? I, the, the simplest analogy is this. You could have a hammer, you could have a screwdriver. They have purpose. It is to hammer a nail or to pry a nail. That is the purpose of a hammer. A screwdriver, flathead or Phillips, has a purpose to do something with a screw. So oftentimes you hear, what's your purpose? What's your mission? I like mission better, but I get stopped at purpose because when someone says, well, this is my purpose. Okay, great. I say, are you living that out in the world? Is that what I'm actually watching you do? Because now it is your life's work. Now you've gone from purpose to action and I could actually observe you out in the world and I could coach you on delivering it. But if we just stop at purpose, then it's a feel good. It's just an aha. So when I saw that, because for years I've been in the back of the room for Landmark Education, that's where I first learned transformation. Then I was also in the back of the room and coached for Tony Robbins. That's where I saw transformation at another level, another type of experience. I got to do years of work with Marianne Williamson. That was deep spiritual transformation, uh, Agape International Spiritual Center with Reverend uh, Michael Bernard Beckwith. And as I observed the questions people would ask and what they were asking about, where they got stopped in life, it was that ownership of who I am meant to be and how do I live it in the world. And it's from years of collecting and observing people getting stuck and what stops them from saying, this is who I am, this is what I'm meant to do, and this is how I'm going to align all of my actions as congruent and aligned as I could be around the work that I'm meant to do in this world. And so living your life's work is an invitation. It's an invitation to look at your life journey. What has all those little breadcrumbs, those seeds of your past been leading you up to? What does your education prepare you for? What did your life experiences prepare you for? And then what is your professional employment? What did that prepare you for? And when we bring it all together, that could be your life work, but it doesn't have to be. Ultimately, your life work is a declaration. It is like the beginning of John. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God. And if we take that image that God is the most powerful ability to create, it is a context for creating, then in the word to world experience, that that's what we have. What I say is how it goes. What I say is what I vibrate back into the world, then my life work is to have other people shine their lights in this world, to have other people stand on the podium moments of their life. That is my life work. It's, as I'm hearing yours, Noah, similar but different. Everybody has their declared life work. And then what is there to do? To take action on it and to get better at delivering it and to do it at a way that you could do it at scale. So you can impact the most amount of people in this world. And that's what I put into my book to show the opportunities that are there. And I also dive deep into some of the tough learning lessons that I had. You know, I, I will tell you up to, up to a good crash and burn until about the age of maybe even 40, I was not the sharpest tool in the shed. I was the most gregarious. I was fun. I was swashbuckling. I'd show you a good time, but in terms of relationships, I was not a good bet, but I learned. Yeah, everything takes, you know, you grow and, and, and that's what you were talking about, being to, able to align with your purpose and your, your mission and who you are in the world. So how does somebody um, start aligning with that? How do you help people start bringing their expertise into the world? Okay, very good. Great question. So the first part is, is um, the three domains. One, are they writing a book 
about making a difference. So I work with nonfiction authors specifically. If they happen to be the next George Lucas and you're going to write the Star Wars trilogy, J.K. Rowling, you're going to write the Harry Potters, uh, C.S. Lewis, Chronicles of Narnia, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, and you come up with the works of uh, The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings, then there's deep life work. There's deep life lessons that we could take from those books. But I don't tend to work in the fantasy or fiction books. I work with nonfiction authors and writers who said, this is what I learned in my life. This is what I want to tell the world and how I want them to know this message. You know, like if everybody had and we could, you know, playfully pretend that their book is a magic wand. If that book was a magic wand, you could just tap somebody on the head and say, now you know this. Go forth. Sin no more. Now you know better. Go do it this way. Then everybody would have the opportunity to take on that, what that author wants to know. So that's the first thing inside of the author launchpad is what is that message? What is the process? What's the model for how you're going to deliver it to the world? And how are we going to monetize it? So that's the author launchpad. The other way that I work with people is those that have already established that. They're still not certain on how do I scale this into a larger global business that is launch your life's work. So people come to me and they say, Chris, I want to be Tony. I want to be Brandon Burchard. I want to be Gabby Bernstein. I want to have the trajectory of Brene Brown. I really want the complete and total ecosystem so I could show up and impact lives at scale. So that's launch your life's work. That is my biggest VIP white glove service premium program. And then third, people come to me and say, I work a lot. I love my job. I love what I'm doing. I just don't feel things are in alignment. And I really want my work to represent who I am as a person. Those are the people who have transcended and gone past this work-life balance that we used to look at. Pre-pandemic, we thought it was work-life balance. Post-pandemic, we've now discovered, oh, no, I have autonomy. I get to make some choices. And that's what we're seeing. People aren't saying, oh, it's, it's about me. But that's why they moved out of the cities. That's why we slowed down. That's what we became present to, that we were fodder for the big corporate machine. And people are like, oh, no, I get my autonomy back again. And that is the first step in discovery. What am I here for? Am I really aligned? Am I congruent with what I said I'm here to do? And if I'm not, or if I'm going to continue to work for an organization, how does the mission of the organization and my life work mission align so that I feel congruent from the moment I wake up to the moment I go to bed and everything else that happens in between those two daily bookends? Yeah, so you do a lot of things to help people, which is great. Um, and now, not to throw a lot of things at people, because I know you're very talented and there's so many things, different ways, but I want to ask, I want to stay really like with like, how does an author, okay, he just wrote, he yeah. just finished writing their book. Now they're, yeah. they're ready, you know, their message is all about, you know, they want to help people make a difference. How do they find out, like, what is their ideal audience? and how to connect to that ideal audience? Because I feel like there's a lot of confusion around that. Yeah, really great. Uh, and one of the best ways that I would say to share that is you have your book behind you right now. Um, is it within reach? No, it's, it's behind you. So, no, it's right um, there. Oh, okay, good. All right. Perfect. The grass is greenest yeah. where I am. So it talks about no comparison, no competition and no scarcity, living in your own love and light and sharing your unique gifts with the world. Fantastic. Now, a couple different ways we're going to discover who is it best for. Now, the grass is greener where I am, mm -hmm. where you are, um, is really universal. That's just a big universal theme that almost anybody could learn to adopt because it, it's a powerful cosmic law that it goes back to what I read is like, you do you, you're supposed to do your journey. Mm -hmm. So most people, all 8 billion of us could learn that lesson, but you're not going to yell it out for all 8 billion. So the best way I would say for most individuals is look back at who you were seven years ago, 10 years ago, mm -hmm. identify that person, 
write about that person. What were they struggling with? What were the things that had them learn? Had you learned, Noah, what needed to go into that book? Like, who was it that needed to know the certainty that who I am, where I am, is exactly where I should be for this stage of my journey? Right. And so to own that. Well, some of what I saw with my book when I wrote my book was that when I was younger, I used to always think the grass was greener somewhere else. You know, how many of us always look outside and we think the grass is greener somewhere else? And so I always yeah. used to run away from myself and try to go thought, oh, if I moved here or if I do this, I'll find happiness, you know? And yeah. I realized that at the end of the day, we can't run away from ourselves. So we have to realize that we more we nurture ourselves in our own lives, and the more we can become the person we're meant to be. So that was part of the message and how to live a life of least resistance because my book really explains to people how to not get stuck and how to connect more to their flow. And I always say, if it doesn't flow, let it go, right? So how can we stop, you know, how can we learn to surf in life and overcome things instead of keep bumping walls? So everything in my book helps people just, you know, step into what they want without it being so difficult and taking the, the, you know, the path of least resistance is what I really talk about. Beautiful. Can I demonstrate my expertise for a second? Sure. I'm going to play with you. Okay, great. At the beginning of this, you said the, the 3G effect helped you discover your soulmate, mm -hmm. right? You said that? Okay. So your book, if we wanted it to be, because I'm going to look at my life inside of this too, could be a book for couples on how to have the most fulfilling relationships possible. Because I was someone who actively practiced the grass is greener on the other side when I was in relationships. That is not a good mantra to have when you're supposed to be in a committed relationship. So for me, I had to learn the lesson that where I was, was the best place for me to be in a relationship. And you spoke earlier that as you embodied this practice, the 3G effect, which I, I would say instead of calling it effect, we're going to maybe call it a process or practice because effect means I'm at the effect of something outside of me. Process means that I get to own it and I get to put it into my life as a practice. So people want processes, they want blueprints, they want frameworks, they want practices. You can take what you've learned and have these extraordinary retreats for couples to learn where you are is exactly where you're meant to be. How does a woman do that in a relationship? How does the man do that in a relationship? And most importantly, you have these processes inside of your book that affirms those practices in a relationship. So there's one thing you could do. You could say, hey, for the next 10 couples, I'm holding this retreat mm -hmm. at Sandals St. Lucia, and it's going to cost this much. And if you want to come and learn how to have the most extraordinary relationship, it's all built off of my book, The Grass is Greener Right Where You Are, for Couples mm -hmm. to Experience Marital Bliss. I just made that up. How's that? No, no, that's that's definitely something that that is good. And of course, there's other things, right, that we could look at it. Um, I, I love that, though. I think that makes a lot of sense. And, uh, you know, if that's something that like I'm passionate about, because I am in an incredible, loving relationship with my husband for over 27 years. So that yeah. that's definitely something that I could definitely help others with. Um, and I also am very into, um, these days, very into helping people with their mind training because what I believe, the reason that I was able to come to this place was because, you know, I learned to train my mind to see the good and the beauty in everything. And so I feel like when you train your mind to see differently, you know, to connect more to the positive instead of to the negative, that also makes a huge difference. So that could, I think that could be multiple paths, right? Yeah, really good. And, and this is what I, I want you and your audience to hear. I gave you what I thought was one version, which was really good. And we're doing this in conversation. Yes, sir. Sure. Contrast is important because you heard it. You're like, yeah, but I want this. Mm -hmm. 
And that's what becomes more important than what I think as the designer of your program, as the writer of your program. I'm extracting it till you until you're like, no, 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 no. This is what it is. This is what I'm meant to do. Okay, great. We got to do that. So my job is to not only extract and listen and engage with you in such a way that I'm, I'm mirroring you back to you in different lenses until you say that one. That's the one. It's like the Goldilocks one. Too hard, too soft, too big, too small, too hot. This one feels just right. This is the one I'm going to be in. Perfect. So now we start to look for those persons who aren't experiencing the clarity that your book describes that they could experience. Those persons who feel out of sorts, those persons who feel confused, and you now get to choose, well, do I want to work with women? Do I want to work with men? Do I want to work with both? Maybe they're in job transition. Maybe they are experiencing that proverbial midlife crisis. You get to now say, this is who my dream clients are. And then call out to them. Hey, if you are X, Y, and Z, and this has been one of the challenges you've been having, I know where you've been. I've been there. And there's a better way of doing it. In fact, I have just the solution. I invite you to join me this coming Friday at 5 p.m. where I'm going to do an info session on my program. And then it just goes from there because you start practicing and you start practicing. You get better at being able to call the individuals that are looking for your solution. I'm very solution-centric. I'm not the old avatar centric where people say, oh, uh, Barbara, she's 48 years old and she has three kids and she drives a minivan. She makes this much. Yeah, I'm looking to solve people's problems. That's, that's the opportunity of the expert economy, the knowledge economy is people are like, I've got a problem. I want to solve it. Great. If your problem looks like something I could solve through the 3G effect, where I'm going to have you be grounded, grateful, and start to know where you came from, you probably want to work with me. But if those things aren't things that you like to do as a practice, I might not be the best, best person for you. Yeah, and so going, um, I know that you help people create a roadmap towards where they're going. That's how you work with them. How does yes. somebody, how do you start creating a roadmap for somebody? And I know you spoke one more thing. I'm throwing one more question at you. Um, <laughs> is, is the first cosmic law in application that you talked about part of that or not? Ah, very good. Gosh, you're, you're so good. I love it, Noah. And for everybody listening here, my son's name is Noah as well. And so I have this love affinity every time I get to say Noah's name. I learned that Noah for girls is a very common name. And uh, my son was named Noah because his mother and I were both animal trainers at the time. And uh, she said, what about Noah? And I'm like, oh, Noah's Ark, it's perfect. So my son is Noah Christopher, and then his last name is hyphenated, Rodriguez Trammell. So um, thank you, Noah. I love saying Noah. Mm -hmm. And to go back to your question, the first cosmic law, as we learn from the Gita, as we learn from the Jewish carpenter about you doing you. So this is my revenue roadmap. I printed one out. I have digital copies. I'll, I could give a framework to your audience. Better you come learn how to do it. But I'm going to squeeze all the way in. The first one right here, the first step, and this is free for any of your audience to come and do this workshop. It's called Own and Amplify Your Expertise. When you do you, when you speak who you are, when you are clear about what you vibrate in this world, word to world, right? Again, word to world. You do you. Your heaven is for you to find who you are. That expertise is not just on paper. It becomes the energetics that engages people. It excites people. It excites your listener when you show up and you say, I am so clear that the 3G process is going to transform your life. People get excited by your expertise because they hear a victory over the past of where they have currently been. 
See, we think our expertise is just well-crafted on our LinkedIn pages. And there's some really well done LinkedIn pages. If you're not sure what you're supposed to be doing, go look at people's LinkedIn titles and their headers. They're really good. Shout out to all those people who've done the work there. But your expertise is designed to light you up as an ownership and then amplify. Because once you own it and it just moves out of your atoms, it moves out of your cells, other people will look at you like, wow, you shine. Wow, you have an energy I'm not used to being around. How can I spend more time with you? How do I get to have what you have? And when they ask that, you say, well, are you, a, for me, I, are you a nonfiction author? No, I'm a speaker. Great. Do you have a coaching program around what you share with people? No, I, I just speak on it and I get paid. Great. Is there a way where people could come in and learn from you, not only how to speak, because that's one thing everybody sells, because we all want to be seen. Look at me speak. Look at me speak. Look at me speak. That's great. But the metric is, can you measure the difference your words made in someone's life? And that's why I say create a coaching program. People try and jump straight to courses. I'm like, don't do a course because you, you don't have that direct contact with people. Create a coaching program, create a workshop, create a retreat. So the first step has to be own your expertise. It is part of the cosmic law that you do your dharma that you find your heaven within. Because that, when people say the law of attraction, it is what you speak, it is what you vibrate, it is what your expertise does in this world that causes that abundance and that attraction to come to you. Is that speak it? In, in ah, your very good, yes, yeah. that's right. It is speak it. Thank you, Noah, you're so good. You're cueing me back to my own words too. It is speak it. Be it, do it, and then have it. The cosmic law is be, do, have. Oftentimes people get stuck inside of do and have. We become the hamsters on the wheel where we're just doing, doing, doing so we can have, 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 and we forget to be it. So word to world. In the beginning was the word, speak it, be it, future fulfilled. When I'm being like this, because I know that out there, the universe is conspiring on my behalf to have me have what I said I wanted to do in this world, then it gives you a different way of being. There's a certainty, there's a conviction, there's a confidence, because it's happening. And now your words, your actions are just pulling it in, doing. And as it comes in, then you have it, you're standing on the stage or wherever you're gonna be tomorrow, this weekend, Noah, I'm standing in front of a, a room full of nonfiction authors, helping them get clear. It is the having that really kind of affirms, speak it, be it, do it, have it. Be, do, have. Word to world. So how do you, so the way you help people to speak it, be it, do it, have it, the rewards, is actually a process you take them through where you're actually holding their hand. You're not just throwing a bunch of things at them, right? Because I've had been with plenty of coaches where uh -oh. they just throw a bunch of things at you and they're like, oh, go do it, go be it, go, you know, and you're like, what? Like, how do I do that? You get overwhelmed and then you start, you know, your saboteurs start coming into your brain and you're like, your negative emotions, you're like, I don't know if I could yeah. do this. And then it stops you from really, but you actually have a different process you take people through where you actually take them on a journey with you. Can you explain that more? Because I feel like when I wrote my book in 2019, I wasn't even thinking about what's the next step. So I would, I could have really used somebody kind of taking me through it. So how would you help me take me on this roadmap journey towards getting my book out there, finding my ideal audience and being able to actually monetize everything that I'm doing? Oh, look at you asking all the good golden questions to get it all out of me. Okay, let's do it. Um, as a coach, specifically, a track and field coach. I was, a and, and to go far enough back, why I do it the way I do it is I was a very short, unathletic, chubby kid shaped like a bowling pin. I look more like the milkman's son than I look like my Latino brothers and cousins who are all champion track and field athletes. Uh, my one cousin made the decathlon for the United States Olympic team. 
So you, you just had to be a natural. You had to be good. And I wasn't. So I had to put in the extra work. For every one hour of a natural, I have to put in three or four. So I became a great technician of the steps that makes people good at what they do. It's why I was a successful track and field championship winning coach, because I could break down the process and watch people's mechanics and say, do this, do this, do this. So as I watch more and more fast forward, the experts who create programs now, they, they're very good at giving you the knowledge of the program. But if you don't know the series of steps and the actions to take and have someone to tell you, wait, 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 that action isn't totally correct. You're, you're, you're in the zone of it, but that's not what you need to do. You need to do this. See, without that performance coaching, people are still left kind of swimming wonky or they stay in the shallow end because there's not that person there to swim next to them or to jump off the high dive and be catching them in the water. So I am a very hands-on, done with you and done for you program. I do not have a do-it-yourself version of the Author Launchpad. The Author Launchpad, they come in and you saw in my roadmap here, there are three core phases. We're gonna package, we're gonna market, and we're gonna monetize that expertise. And there's nine core steps that I have to make sure that you go through. All nine of those steps because I know when you reach step seven, eight, and nine, now you're moving along. Now you've got the ownership. Now you've got the digital landing page, the VSL page. Now you've got all the graphics that my team has professionally built so you could be posting on social media. All of those things where clients normally get stuck, authors get stuck, and they're shopping. Where do I find my graphics? How do I create my author one sheet? Uh, do I make a page for my book? Do I make a page for me? Who do I make a page for? What should be the name of it? I handle all of that. I get people clear and I say, follow my steps. Follow my steps. And that's what has people be successful. And I build the foundation with them. The Author Launchpad is really about building the four and five figure foundation of your author business. And in building that foundation through doing those steps done with you and done for you, then we get to choose. Are you ready for that next level? Are you ready to take this work and now amplify it out into the world? So um, I'm an advocate that you do programs where people are hands-on with you, showing you exactly step-by-step. Step. So uh, for me, I have a, my morning session is from 9 to 10.30 on Monday specific. Tuesdays, it is from 9 to 10. We do it a little bit shortened. It's condensed, kind of the power session. And then on Thursdays from 10 to 11 a.m. Pacific, there's office hours. And then I do a workshop throughout the week on some other topic. So my clients have as much as four and a half hours with me per week versus I bought a program. I'm in a program. I got that back from a really great, like I looked at her book. I'm like, oh, I'd love to work with her. And she's like, oh, I'm in these person's programs. And I know these person's programs. I used to coach for one of these person's programs. And I'm like, I know you're in it. And I know you're trying to get through the templates. I know you're trying to go through the modules. I know you're not getting it done because most human beings don't block the time to go through something and then to do the homework of it and then to go refine it. See, I make sure that in my program, we do all those things. So more power to people because it, it is just what we think because we're smart individuals that we could do it on our own. And I want to save you the time. I want to save you the money because I need you to get on your podium as fast as you can and make the difference in people's lives. So I had to create a done with you and done for you program. If I was going to experience what I'm here to do, which is to have people do what they're here to do in this world. Yeah, I think that really makes a difference for people um, because, you know, we all need more of a roadmap to know where we're going. It's very easy to get sidetracked. Yes. And I think with your roadmap, you actually get the results um, of what you want within that time. And is there more steps after those nine steps or do you just repeat or how do you continue after you go through your, is that a three month program? Yeah, very good, Noah. Um, so it is a 90 day program. The, the market right now listens for 
a 90 day program. Most people can get the work done in 90 days, but that is like the learning phase. That is the information phase. Then after that, I add on another 90 days of implementation. So when you're in my program, you pay for the training and the delivery and the side-by-side -side and the done for you work because I write people's roadmaps. I want those of you that are here, you're going to give me the information based off your book, based off your expertise, based off your knowledge, based off your understanding of your ideal client. I write that roadmap. I go over with you the landing page. So once we have all of that and I give you your outline for your workshop and coach you on delivering your workshop, so that people are a yes to your programs, then I get to coach you in action. And that's the implementation phase. And that comes with the program. So there's another 90 days after it where you get to be with me and keep coming back and say, how am I doing? Is this how I should be doing it? Can you take a look at this? I did a workshop and I didn't convert or I hosted a workshop and zero people showed up. What could I have done better? So not only do I give them the roadmap and give them the blueprint, it's like the recipes for your favorite type of cookie. You want to make sure that that same recipe gets produced over and over. Well, your book has a recipe to it as well. And then we say, now go practice cooking it, selling it, having people love it, create that big base of loving testimonials. And then we start to look at scale. So anytime you see somebody reach out to you like scale the seven figures, scale the six figures, you're not a fish. Stay away from the scalers right now until you know your process, until you have your roadmap, until you have driven that car around the track and you know how it handles. You stay away from scaling and you get good at the gift that you have at its most basic level. Right, so work, work on your foundation first. Always. And, and let, me ask you, let me ask you another question. How Please. important is a funnel when you have, when you, how is important a funnel to your success? Like I know you help create people create that as well. Yeah, very good. You have to have a mechanism for moving people from traffic to inside of your ecosystem. And the best way that I have learned is to create a video sales letter funnel. So in the world of it, there's a landing page which could be static and it says, great thing about Noah, great thing about her books, problems you overcome, click below to come to her next uh, webinar, her next overview session, doors are only going to be open. So you got to have a place where your traffic could step in and go shop. That's what a funnel is, if we could just kind of frame it that way. I say, have a video that's included as well. Now look, I'm a chatty Kathy. I like to talk. Some people are not as willing to show up, but I say with a little bit of coaching, you could usually still create a video that says, hi, I'm Jane Doe, and I created such and such. When I wrote this book, I was remembering when I went through X, Y, and Z. And then what made the difference in my life was when I started implementing one, two, and three. And now my life looks like LMNOP. And I would love for you to have this same experience in your life. If this is something that would make a difference to you, I invite you to click on the link below. I have an upcoming session. I like to keep them small and intimate, just 10 people. So be one of those first 10 people, and I'll see you on this day at this time. Look forward to seeing you. And, and so much more engaging yeah, than so, just so, a, a yeah. page. So video is a great way for a funnel, but how about an ebook? What are you thinking of an ebook as far as getting people into your funnel? Were you watching me with one of my clients yesterday? <laughs> huh? Is that what you were doing? <laughs> you were. Yeah. Okay. I know a few That's things. So, I know a few things. Yeah. You know a few things. I like it. Yes. I just helped one of my clients who wrote a, in fact, I will shout him out right now. Because um, I have his book right here. We're just working on it. This is by Jeff Cohen. This is Count Audible. It is the idea of can, what can you be counted on for? Not the world of responsible, but count on me for this. But don't ask me to do that. So Jeff loves to work with acupuncturists and holistic healers. Um, simply because as a business consultant, he was on his feet a lot. 
and he had to do a lot of work. So he started going to acupuncturists to keep his body aligned. He's like, I really like this, but he noticed that their businesses were not being terribly successful. And he started finding this with some dentists and other holistic practices. So he took his genius and now we've rebranded his practice to AccuBizHub. So he uses his corporate business smarts in a distilled down model to support uh, acupuncturists, chiropractors, other health and wellness practitioners so that they could grow. And we've taken chapters from his book. And then we also created a couple chapters from Jeff's version of his revenue roadmap we merged that together, and now we're creating a new ebook that is designed specifically to help acupuncturists, chiropractors, health and wellness practitioners to move their businesses forward and get them out of the places they've been stuck. And that is a great way to show your expertise. It is a great way for people who are interested in the services you provide to trade email for content. And then you keep nurturing them. Hey, I saw you, you like this type of information. I'm gonna put more out about that. Is there something else you'd like for me to share in my upcoming live streams that I do? Like I do live streams on Monday. So if you were to tell me, hey, Chris, this coming Monday, I really love it if you talk about this. This is what my audience wants to hear. I'll weave that in. I'll make sure that I speak about that. So, 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 Chris, is, is, so Chris, is the, is the ebook free? The ebook is free. So the that's, e-books, that's a way of getting e-books cut. Are always free. Yeah. So basically, you, like you said, you're putting the ebook out there with like a little more getting your expertise a little more narrowed down to the niche you wanted to. And then they want the content and you get their email and you build yourself that way. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, absolutely. And you know what, Noah, you saw when I delivered my workshop at the Healthopedia Symposium. And so um, I'm turning that workshop into an ebook. So I delivered your best health story. And I talked about the model that I think every author should be focused on. Mm -hmm. And so I will have that. In fact, look, I'm going to, I'm going to one up you by the time this reaches your airwaves, I will turn that into an ebook that has the step-by-step someone should follow. And that's what I'm going to give your audience since that's how I met you. And that's, we're here. You're going to put me on the hook because I'm an action taker. I'm a performance coach. I'm not, a, oh, that's a good idea. I'll do it when, someday. I'm a by when guy. So I will have this ready as an ebook. By when? So by when? <laughs> what day are you going to send this to me? What day are we going to release this? Well, this is going to be next week, next Tuesday. It's going to be um, already out, uh, the podcast right. on my on my you know on my youtube channel apple spotify but you know we can uh you know we'd love to ready by friday all right by next friday okay we're giving you a little more time no i'm just kidding (laughs) one week so i can make sure i got it refined (laughs) yeah no pressure no pressure i'm just kidding yeah you're an athlete all they gotta do is tell me they want it and as soon as it's ready i'll send it to them even if they ask me the day it comes out i'll be like hey i just need 24 more hours and it's going to come right to you that's cool. All right. So how, how can people find you? So tell people how to find you. Uh, that's great. Well, one, you can come to Long Beach. There's a great couple bars around here. Great margaritas. If you're in Long Beach, reach out to me. And how you reach out to me is you go to hello at chrisstrammelcoaching.com. So hello, Chris, C-H-R-I-S, Trammel, T-R-A-M-M-E-L-L, coaching. Dot com. So there's one. Hello at chrisstrammelcoaching.com. The second way is you go to www.theauthorlaunchpad.com. Theauthorlaunchpad.com. Go there. Go to the connect uh, contact form. Reach out to me. And by then, by next Friday, you will also see where it will say... Um, I got it. Your best health story. I'll come up with a better name that resonates with more authors and experts and speakers. But since we were all in the health domain, that was the name that I used there. Uh, so they could have that ebook as well. So the other way is if you go to www.theauthorlaunchpad.com, it'll be there. And I will directly put this on a page um, called Gifts. 
I'll figure that one out. I don't know, and I shouldn't have said it yet, but now my team's going to be like, why did you do that? Now we got to go build a page called theauthorlaunchpad.com forward slash gifts. <laughs> uh, that's, but that's how it goes. You build on the fly. That's what the Wright brothers did. They were learning to fly as they were going. Right. Awesome. I, I love that. That's great. So I think we've learned a lot here today and there's so much great information here. You guys don't hold back. Um, if you have a book and you want to get your message out in the world, Chris can really help you get it out with a roadmap and a plan so you can really start monetizing your expertise. I think that's what it's all about. Thank you, Chris, Absolutely. so much for joining me today and being a guest on the World Healing Tour podcast. No, I'm honored to have been your guest today. I hope that you and I combine forces to launch a lot of lights out to the world and to get people to be willing to think beyond book sales, to think about impact and influence, and to become great philanthropists because now they have the income that they've been dying to have. And that's what we're out here to cause, people making a difference in this world. So I'm humbled. And I hope that more people get out there and cause the healing they're meant to heal out in this world. Thank you so much. And you definitely are a great resource to do that because we can't do it alone. We need people, coaches to push us forward in life. So thank you again so much, Chris. Uh, You're I want, welcome. I want to thank you all today for joining the World Healing Tour podcast. Until next time, remember to have a grateful heart, to ground in love and compassion, and know every day that you are not alone, you're guided by God. Thank you, everyone. Have a beautiful day. Namaste.